Hello, my name is Ian Kang, and I am a sophomore with a biology major. And for my presentation, I'm going to do an obscure, obscure but phenomenal hero named Jane Cook Wright. All about her. You may not hear about her, but she impacted every single cancer patient from today. Not only she impacted them, but she also impacted me. I am an expiring doctor, researcher, and a maybe a possible father. And her biography taught me that anything is possible. Not by skin, not by gender, but the effort he put into it. She was born on November 29, 1990, an era where white men dominated everything, such as STEM and humanities. But that didn't stop the Wright family. Her family did amazing deeds. For example, her grandfather, Sia Ketchum Wright, was born enslaved, and yet he got his medical degree from Meharry Medical College. Her grandfather, William Petra Hen, that's him, was the first African American to graduate from Yale Medical College. And lastly, her father, Louis Tompkins Wright. That's him. He was the first black surgeon for the Harlem Hospital. You may wonder, did Jane Cook write the amazing deeds like her father, grandfathers did? And of course she did. She did outstanding things, phenomenal person. And here's some backstory. Dr. Wright got her MD in 1945 and started her residency at the Harlem Hospital. During this time, she married David D. Jones Jr. and gave birth to two daughters, Jane and Allison. It was in 1948 where she started to get really popular. It was this time where she was trying to find new ways to treat cancer with her father, and they decided to use nitrogen and mustard gas against them. And at that time, it was effective and it was safer compared to using radiation. Was a, and this was a huge game changer for everyone. It was in 1953 where she became the head researcher of Harlem Cancer Research Foundation and published her research. But the thing was, her, since she was a woman and she was African-American, no one took her seriously. But that didn't stop her from publishing her, re publishing her research and just trying to make a better place for the world. And, and it paid off. In 1964, she was one of the founding members of American Society of Clinical Oncology. And this was amazing because out of seven members, she was the only African-American and woman to be to be part of the founding members. And the other six were white men. The reason why that she created this with the other six members was because in her quote, our goals were to bring about a set of standards for a clinical oncology specialty to enlarge the area of knowledge in the field and ensure that vital information was readily available and dismantiated, end quote. In that same year, President Lyndon B. Johnson appointed Dr. Wright to the President's Commission on Heart Disease and Cancer and Stroke. In 1971, she became the first woman to serve president in the New York Cancer Society, the first woman. And after 44 years of career, she retired as an emergency professor at New York Medical College in 1987. And sadly, on February 19, 2013, she died in Gutenberg, New Jersey at the age of 94. She had a long life. And at that time, she was doing amazing things too. And the most insane part or like mind blowing to me was that while she was doing this, she had one thing in her mind, her family. And her quote, my plans for the future are to continue seeking a, a cure for cancer, to be a good mother to my children and a good wife to my husband. End quote. Uh, as I come to the end to this performance, I hope you enjoy it much as I did about discovering Jane Cook Wright. Once again, here's your picture. And I just don't know what to say about her. She was, she was an amazing woman. She always kept her family in mind, always wanted to make the world a better place, and nothing stopped her. She looked every, she looked every obstacle as a challenge. I hope you enjoy my performance and I hope you much learn something as much as I did. 
Thank you.